to this series of lectures entitled Learn C. This is a course for undergraduates in computer programming. Um, why learn computer programming? Well, the reality is, is that uh, computers are really, really great machines and they do a lot for us, but they don't do very much without our input. Normally, that input comes through an app or a program that's already written for us, where we just use the mouse or click on the keyboard and things happen. But um, what this course is about and what this first introductory lecture is about is showing how um, that system doesn't always work for um, really big problems or problems that you might face as a, a technology leader in this 21st century. Um, the programming language that this course is in is going to be about is the programming language called C. It's a very old language. Um, and um, uh, there are a lot of other really, really good languages out there. Python is a fantastic language to learn Java. There are a bunch of other languages that are more modern and probably if you're going into software engineering, you're going to be using. Um, C, however, is still relevant. Our industrial advisors tell us so. But uh, more than that, it is the root of a lot of other programming languages. So if you become a software engineer, you might program in C Sharp or C++. And those are C, those are C is the origin of those languages as well. So it's, and it's also a language that's worth learning because it's easy to, once you've learned how to program in C, it's easy to uh, use other languages as well. Learning a computer programming language is not dissimilar from learning a foreign language in that in, normally a foreign language is two human beings talking to each other, trying to communicate. This is us trying to communicate with a computer in a way that we can both understand. So this introductory, introductory lecture is all about this particular challenge that I'm going to pose to you. Um, and it's all around this field of big data. Um, you've probably heard the term big data before. In the, previously, it was all about data mining, collecting lots and lots of data. Now it's all about analytics, how to analyze the data and interpret it. And so this, this challenge is kind of a very simple, uh, simplified version of data analytics. Um, what kinds of big data sets are there? There's a lot of data sets that you might encounter. Um, uh, it may be um, uh, sensor readings from around the city, uh, millions or hundreds of millions of sensor readings uh, that taken fr uh, from a city for an environmental study. Or it could be um, millions or billions of packets that pass through a particular router looking for hackers or um, bad actors, that kind of thing, so for cybersecurity. These are all examples, very, very simple, ordinary, everyday examples that happen all the time in which uh, you may collect um, millions or billions of data points. Those data points might be numerical, just numbers, or they might actually be words or characters, things like that. This course, um, is, this introductory course, is just going to be on um, doing analytics on numbers mostly. We'll get to some character manipulation and understanding how to do programming on uh, words and things like that. But uh, for now, in the beginning, uh, let's just focus on uh, numbers. Um, uh, so I'm so so this lecture is me giving showing you a challenge uh, that can't be done with uh, current off-the-shelf technology really, and how to write your own and how writing your own program can help you solve a problem that is, seems to be impossible at first blush. Um, so here's a real-life practical example that you might encounter in the workplace. Your boss may give you. Um, folder with a bunch of data in it and say, hey, I need to do some analytics on, I need you to do some analytics on this data. So here's a uh, folder with some data files in it. There are four data files in it. Um, I made these um, uh, data files just for this um, example here. Um, and the first one, the O stands for output in these data files. First one has 10 points in it. The second one has a thousand. The third one has a million. And the fourth, fourth one has 10 million. And you can see how the size of the data file increases according to how many points are in the, each file here. So most data coming to you will come in the form of a file, right? And so um, there's a lot of different ways that you might want to do. Um, uh, we might have your boss may ask you to analyze this data. One way might be, okay, how many of these points satisfy a certain criteria? Um, uh, how many are how many of these values? These are all numerical data files are above a certain threshold value. So um, if you know if if their um, sensors monitoring a piece of equipment and the equipment gets the temperature of a piece of equipment and the equipment gets too hot, um, you know you want to see when how often that machine gets really hot or 
Um, if, it's, if it's sensors monitoring traffic, how, much, how many times does the traffic um, get above, above a certain level of uh, concentration or um, the, cars gets above a certain, the number of cars on the road get above a certain value, that kind of thing. So uh, another way to some analyze or some, uh, analyze data is with summary statistics. And so the easiest summary statistic is the average. So can you take the average of this data file? of the data in this data file. Those are two uh, pretty uh, normal examples. If somebody asked me to do summary st statistic on 10 points, I think the right tool that I would choose would be Excel. Um, so um, uh, let's just get Excel. And um, open up uh, the smallest data file here, 010. Um, there's this. Uh, um, import uh, wizard for importing uh, raw text files. And so I run it, and lo and behold, there are 10 values here um, in column A. Um, if I want to do the threshold value, I'm just going to, I can say how many of these values are above 0.75. And so I look at the data values here and I say, okay, that one's above 0.75, and that one's above 0.75. Two, two out of the 10 are above 7, 0.75. Just a note um, about this made-up data that I made up. It's a random. It's a, just a random number generator between zero and one. And so, if about, for 0.75, you'd guess about one quarter of the numbers are above um, 0.75, and two out of ten in this case are. But I don't want to do that. I want to do it with an equation. So I'll go equals is a one greater than 0 0.75, and then I'm going to convert it to a number. I'm going to take it and copy it. And I'll add up the sum of those. One to the ten. Yeah, two out of the ten are um, above seven five. And then if I want to do the summary statistic of this data, I'd say the average of a one to a ten. 4, 7, 8. The average of a random number between 0 and 1 should be 0.5, so that's close. So with this very, very small sample, we can see that we're already, the data kind of makes sense. That was pretty easy, not hard, and it takes no learn, you know, if you just know the basics of Excel, this is a pretty easy task. What about a bigger file? What happens when we do a bigger file? Um, I could do the thousand, but let's just jump straight to the million because you get the point here. Let's go to the million data file. It took a little while to load. That's OK. Uh, but I can do the same exact thing. I can say equals a, is a1 greater than 0 0.75, uh, and then turn it into a number from, from true or false to a number, and then A while. Yep, and that looks right. I'm looking at the numbers. That looks good. And so then equals sum of B1 to B1 million. About 250,000 out of the million are above 0.75. That makes sense. And if I'd want to do the summary statistics, average. A1 to A1 million, almost to one half. Yeah, looks good, right? So, so that was um, uh, uh, um, that was a pretty easy to do, uh, but it took a little pointing and clicking, and it it doesn't seem like it's slow. We just did the average of a million numbers. That's a, um, a pretty cool, um, but there's a a better way to do it, and so I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, uh, how I did it in with a computer programming language. Um, so I wrote a program in C, and I'm going to run it, but I'm going to run it as, as, a, as a console app. So I'm going to get the command prompt here. And I'm going to go to the directory that I made. And then I made a, I wrote a program called Calc Data 2. Calc Data 2. I'm going to run that program just right by typing in the name of it. And I'm going to use the, 
look at the data file 010, that's a 10 point data file, I'm going to use the threshold 0 0.75. Now, you, you don't know how this, I, I know how this computer program works because I wrote it, and so it seems pretty codified, you know, in uh, code where it's not really obvious how to make it work. I had to I had to know how it works because I wrote it, right? Um, so that was um, so the answer came up ten numbers point set four seven eight. That was exact same, and the two out of the ten are above point seven five. So that works the same. How do I do one million numbers? So I just change the data file here to a million. So it's it, so I wrote a program that can calculate the average and threshold above a certain amount that I give it for um, uh, for any arbitrary data file data size. So I just did the 10 data points. I just did the million data points. It was just like a snap. It did both of them really quickly. For me to do those two data files of different sizes in Excel, I'd had to point and click and do all that stuff. There are ways to kind of automate in Excel, but they're not nearly as easy to automate as th these steps, right? So um, all of a sudden, you can see that um, the potential of C to be able to do analytics on data is it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, I haven't convinced you yet, um, maybe, of um, it being able to go e even above and beyond what Excel can do yet. I'm going to do that next. And, but first, a comment on um, this programming style. It, to, right now, I'm sure it looks um, indistinguishable from magic to you. I got this command prompt up. I typed a bunch of things into it. I t gave this weird coded message that's, um, how do I know how to interpret that? Um, it, it seems, right now, it seems, um, that part seems really hard. And it, in the beginning, um, it, it is, as students tell me, it's, um, yes, that part gets a lot of getting used to. But by the end of this series of lectures, and by the time you're a senior, those steps are going to be pretty um, doable and easy. So this, this, um, these lectures will take you from, wow, this is, what is this, to, oh, yeah, I know what that is. So that's what the goal of this series of lectures will be, so that when you come back and look at this introductory lecture, you'll, you'll be really bored. You'll go, yeah, 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 I know how to do that. Okay, so now let's go back to Excel and try to do the 10 million data point file, right? Let's see if, it, if Excel can do that. Kind of know the answer because I've been sort of prepping you with this. So I try to load that. The, the uh, import wizard comes up. File not loaded completely show help. The file contains more than 1,048,576 rows. So, you, so the problem with Excel is if there are more than 1,048,000 uh, data points in a single line, m m um, Excel cannot do that. It cannot make it, uh, it cannot um, uh, load a data file bigger than that. That's this limitation of Excel. Hmm. So that's a problem, right? So it won't do it. I mean, it loaded the first million points, but it can't do the 10 million points. Hmm. Can, can my program do that? Sure. I wrote it to do it, so I know. So I just all I have to do is just change the name of the file to 10 million. One. About five or six seconds it did it. Um, it turns out the average is about almost exactly one half, and about 2.5 million um, data points are above 0.75, so that it makes sense too. And um, and but the but the I'm bearing the lead by showing that the data makes sense. This, it took five seconds to do a problem, to, to, to do some data analytics on a data file that's 10 times too large for Excel to handle, right? That, you, you just, there's, Excel just couldn't do it. And for a C program that's well-written, it was just duck soup. It just happened um, in five seconds. That's the power of programming languages and writing computer programs yourself. Um, it, it just, there's just no, sometimes there's just no way you can do it except with computer programming, especially if you're doing big time data sets. And um, uh, trust me, please uh, trust me, uh, I've been on the block a, a long time here, and um, it's almost a virtual guarantee that some point in your career, you're going to be given some data sets that's really, really large, that standard apps aren't going to do it if you're involved in uh, leading technology. Um, that's the end of this introductory lecture. Um, for next time, uh, what I need you to do is uh, download DevC.
that's here. So just Google Bloodshed Dev C download, and the, uh, it's really easy to download. It'll ask you a couple things. Just use all the defaults. Don't change anything. The standard way uh, to install it is perfectly fine for this class. Thank you.